All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love y'all dearly, man. Here we are back to what they call Friday night, the 22nd of December, 2023. We know it's the eighth month of Chesh Van, don't we? Praise God. Day 10. Is it day 10? Uh, 13th, yeah. 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21, 22. Day 10. Chesh Van 10. Praise the Lord. Hey, I got the best news in the world. My dad went to heaven this morning. Praise God, man. My dad is in heaven. I love it. The best news in the world. I've been waiting to hear that. I wanted him out of that stupid nursing home. Praise God. That was hell. I want him in heaven. Guys, you got it wrong if you uh, don't want to go to heaven. You got it wrong if you want to stay here on earth. You got it wrong, 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 wrong. But you got it right when you want to go to heaven. And my dad wanted to go to heaven. He uh, told everybody about heaven. He knew that everybody's default was hell. He knew it, man. And he was highly sensitive all the time. And he was a personal witness, sir, like you have never seen in your life. And we praise God for that, man. Hallelujah. And uh, he'd tell the gospel, preach the gospel. Good news. Believe, 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 he'd say. And praise God. I just imagine him up there with my mama, his parents, my mama's parents, uh, our loved ones, my uncle, the babies that were miscarried, all of them. And so praise God, if you're just joining us, my dad went to heaven this morning, praise God. We're excited about that. And right here at the Christmas season, it'll be right after Christmas, so I'll get to preach his funeral. And uh, praise God for that. He is saved, praise God, fighting stage four pancreatic cancer. Amen, Eric. He came out of Catholicism. Yeah, good for him. Coming out of Babylon, amen? Got to come out of Babylon, dude. Praise God for him. Stage four pancreatic. Yeah, that's, a, that's heavy duty right there. Uh, rejoicing with you, JB. Hallelujah. Glory to God, man. And uh, pray for me as I preach that funeral. I don't want it to be a long, carried out thing. I just want to share his heart for souls, man. And every one of you out here in this audience is lost and going straight to hell until you ain't. Why don't you believe and go to heaven with us? You know, that kind of a thing. You must be born again. You know, preach the truth. And then he's going to be buried next to my mama, who died when I was 21 years of age. And uh, so that's kind of wild, man. Kind of wild, just trippy, trippy, trippy. D died um, 10 days shy of being 92. In Chesh Van. He's my running Methuselah. I can't think of another one in my life. 92. Chesh Van. He always wanted to be raptured alive, man. Raptured alive. He looked forward to it. He answered the phone. Praise the Lord, he's coming soon. Or, look up, he's coming soon. Praise God. Always thinking about Jesus. Always thinking about Jesus, man. Now, he was rough as a cob. He was rough as a cob. He grew up dysfunctional, in a dysfunctional family. His grandpappy was a mixed breed, half breed Indian and got killed in his driveway, murdered in his driveway over a horse deal or a cattle deal, I think. And just a rough cob, grew up in the uh, Depression era. And then when he was 14 years of age, he was so excited about his little baby brother. He had no siblings. His little brother being born, brother being born. And while his brother was being born, he's choked out to death with his umbilical cord. And my 14-year-old dad flipped out. Nervous breakdown, crazy breakdown. He never did describe it. But he said it tore him apart, ruined him. And uh, he determined from that day forward he would never show one more emotion ever. One year later, he lied about his age and joined the United States Air Force at the age of 15. Flew all around the world during the Korean War. 
And one night over one of the oceans, I can't remember if it is the Atlantic or the Pacific, he was laying on his back on a B-29. I think it was coming back from, from England to the USA, I think. And he was on his back laying on the floor of a B-29 bomber, and he said, there has got to be more to life than this. Meanwhile, he got out of the military, and he's up in Chicago working at the steel mills up in Chicago as an electrician. That's what he was. That's what he studied, and that's what he knew. He was an electrician up in the steel mills. And one day he was at home, and the door knocked. He answered the door, and the guy said, Hi, I'm uh, Jim Lyons. I'm from over here at First Baptist Church, Hammond, Indiana. And uh, I was just wondering if you uh, knew that if you died today, if you'd go to heaven. My dad said, well, yeah, I'm, I'm Baptist. And the guy looked at him in the eyes and said, I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you knew that you were going to go to heaven when you died. My dad said, no. And he was saved. This man was door knocking, went to his house and shared the gospel with him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And uh, several years after that, he uh, packed the family up, the family that existed at that time before Davy and I were born, and moved on down to Chattanooga, Tennessee and went to Bible college there and learned the things of God. And praise God. He went from there, Chattanooga, Tennessee, preaching a church, went to Callio, Virginia. That's where Davy and I were born. We were born in Callio, Virginia, and when we were a year of age, we moved to Nebraska. Dad took a church in Omaha, Nebraska. And that thing was on fire. 700 people in that church growing, growing, growing. And then the 70s come along, the 80s come along, and people didn't want to go to church anymore. And people didn't want to hear about salvation. People didn't want to hear about their sin being preached against. And the crowds got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And he stayed faithful to the message. You must be born again. Believe, believe. And then you Christians, you better snap out of it. You better walk holy with the Lord, man. God wants that from you. Praise God. You never know the impact we'll have when we share the gospel. Amen. We have this preacher right here because of a door knocker a generation before me. Hallelujah. That's the truth, man. That is the truth. And it, those independent Baptists are the door knockers. It's either going to be one of them or a Jehovah's Witness. And the independent Baptists have quit knocking on doors. Jehovah's Witness hadn't. Praise God. Karen says, never knew all this. Your dad was amazing. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be doing that. Uh, we don't know exact, you know, the dates and all that jazz. We're going to travel to Northeast Alabama. And do the funeral there, do the graveside there, bury him right next to my mama. Amen. And then hopefully not long, my, my uh, Methuselah just went out of this world. And Okay. And, and see, see, but we don't mourn. This is a whole different setup. We rejoice and be exceeding glad, for I know great is his reward in heaven. And it'll be a joy. You guys know how big of a privilege it's going to be to do his funeral? There may not be 10 folks there. They might be a hundred. I don't know. We're not even in his country. We're in my mama's country. She was Alabama. He was Kentucky. I don't know who's going to show up. We got family going to show up. We're going to get there. We're going to present the gospel to them. And we're going to encourage those that are saved to get busy. I mean, you know, that was the message he preached. That was the message he got out of the Bible. That's the one, if you've noticed, that's the one we preach here. And that's the one we're going to continue to preach there. Because of a fella who didn't take, yeah, I'm a Baptist for an answer. Amen? Amen. You guys know that God absolutely hates Christmas. He does. We've preached that for years. We've preached it for years. We've preached it for years out of the plain text. Sean's found a bunch of Bible codes talking about it. How God hates that Christmas tree. He hates Christmas. He hates everything that goes along with it. <sighs> everything that goes along with it. And he's sick of it. It's a curse to him. Those smells are a curse to him. Those trees are a curse to him. And we were just talking about, Vondo and I were talking about Robert Breaker. He just made two videos, one in Spanish, one in English, same message. And he's got a Christmas tree behind him all decorated up. And he's wearing a hat from the cult of Mithros. 
referred to today as the Santa cap. And the candy cane. He talks about the candy cane being an upside down J for Jesus. The candy cane is for two ball cane. Freemasons. You have a cane and two balls. You know, your F book, uh, Facebook symbol. You got your Facebook, you got your F there, and you got your two little thingies. It looks like an F. It's two ball cane. Everything's that in this world. And he's wearing that hat of Mithros, a cult of debauchery and drunkenness. Orgies. And he says, I don't know what this hat's about. We call it a toboggan. And he's sitting there wearing it in his sermon. God hates that with a passion. You know what Robert Breaker should have done when we introduced the Bible code to him? Sean personally introduced the Bible code to him. He should have said more than, oh, cool. He should have hung on a little more to really understand the awesomeness, the holiness of the fire of God, the consuming fire of God. When he says to separate yourself from something, he means totally light and dark. Get yourself out of the dark. And he used the term, yeah, I'm just doing this for clickbait. I don't like that tree. I've got three different sermons I preached against that tree. And I just did this. So what, what do I need to do? Come out here with three naked chicks tomorrow night for clickbait? H have them just shaking their junk all over the place? And then I'll say, hey, y'all need the gospel. Is that what I need to do? You all want some clickbait? We're here to preach the gospel, man. He got 685,000 subscribers. And that's why. And the Bible code needs to be more than just, ah, cool to you. It needs to be the fire of God. It needs to be the thunders of heaven. Amen? Amen. Why don't we look at some of these Christmas ones, man? So I just wanted to praise God and share with you my daddy's in heaven. And uh, it's a no so sh sh salvation. Now, my dad has gone on and seen some folks that he led to the Lord and discipled. Irvin Gilliland. David Kahanowitz, a bunch of them who worked in the church, who wor worked in church work with us. Amen. Both the Kahanowitzes, a bunch of people that he led to the Lord. Paul Orman, 13-year-old kid killed in a, a snow sled accident. Came to our church, rode our buses. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And that bunch was there to greet him. I said, man, thanks, Pastor, for, you know, knocking on our door. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Look at this code. Now, now I need to, I need to bring this up and let you see the table itself. Yeah, I'm going to have three naked chicks behind me tomorrow night, guys, and we'll preach about Jesus. How's that sound? Clickbait. All right. That's what it looks like. Boom. All right. And so this is what it says. Christmas. That, that is what he brought up in the Old Testament. And he only looked at the Hebrew. He hadn't even looked at the Aramaic yet. When he, and these are just... Off the cuff, look, look what I just found. Look look here, look at this one. Look, oh, look at that. Hey, Rex. Uh, New York's has the Dancing Girl Rockettes for that chick stuff. Yep. Yep. Always attention getters. Glitz and lights and glam and clickbait. You dummy, Robert. All right. Christmas. Here's what it says. What you just saw. To curse. This is God talking, right? God's word in his dialect. It is to curse me. The purpose for Christmas is to curse God. It's from Babylon. He curses Babylon. God curses Babylon for cursing him. Because that tree comes straight out of Babylon. Learn not the way of the heathen there, Jeremiah chapter 10. Babylonians. The daughters of Babylon versus the daughters of Jerusalem. The daughters of Zion. These are your two teams. These are your two sides. Mystery Babylon or the Mystery Church. You better determine which side you were in. Mystery Babylon. Everybody's in Mystery Babylon and they're going straight to hell. 
and you better determine that you don't want to be part of that mystery anymore and you want to be part of the mystery church and you're going to believe that Jesus Christ left heaven, got himself, came here in flesh and took up on all of our sin on the cross to die in our place. Death, burial, and resurrection. He did it for you. He didn't have to. He was innocent. He was perfect. He already had heaven. But he left there to come to this cesspool, this toilet. And he lived here and had to put up with all of this. And then he became our sin. He who knew no sin. Will you believe that story that he did this for you, that he died for you, and he paid for your eternity in full? And when he suffered for your sins and paid the price for all your sins, it was the past, present, and future ones. All of them. They've, they've all been taken away under the blood, washed, burn up. And you're no longer responsible for the first one. Because the father looked at Jesus and saw all your sin on him. And he placed every bit of sin on Jesus. All of it. There wasn't one that was missed from anybody. All humans, all humanity, for all time. Their sin was placed on Jesus. And the Father rifled his wrath out on Jesus for your sake. So you could be set free from it. Do you believe that? That'll save your soul if you'll believe that he did that for you. Oh, he did that for me. God did that for me. He became flesh, took on my sin, took, took all of my sin away was burnt up for my sin. So my sin would never come back to haunt me. And I could never be condemned for not even one sin anymore. Do you believe that? If you'll believe that, you'll be saved. That'll activate God's salvation, his perfection in your life. Please believe. So now we're looking at this here Bible code. God hates Christmas. God hates it with a passion. He doesn't just dislike it a little bit. He says... To curse. Christmas is to curse. And every time you celebrate Christmas and you present your Christmas trees and you present your little stockings and you present your elves and you present all that Christmas crap, you're cursing everybody you present it to. Christmas is to curse. Then God goes a little deeper and he said, it is cursed to me. It's cursed to God. It's cursing God. And it's from Babylon. He curses Babylon. God does. Obama. To put Jehovah to shame. The purpose of Christmas from Satan is to put Jehovah to shame. Because Christians who won't read their Bibles and haven't come to know him celebrate Christmas. And you're putting him to open shame. What did Hebrew say? When you sin willfully, you put him to open shame. Celebrating Christmas is to sin willfully. You go up in your attic, go get the Christmas stuff, go out in the garage, get the Christmas stuff, go out in the shed and get the Christmas stuff. Drive down to the storage shed, get your Christmas stuff, and you bring it home and bring it into your house. God says that's an abomination. But you do it anyway. You willfully do this and you work and you might even stress. And you turn on songs that curse God all day because they're dreaming of a white Christmas and don't know they're going straight to hell. To put Jehovah to shame, Genesis 8.21, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. That goes right through this code. When you look at that picture again, that's the green Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. They're angry all the time. Would you consider Advent part of that curse since it is at the wrong time and points to Christmas? Yeah, 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 yeah. All Advent is wrong. Why did they take five weeks to do something that just was a matter of moments? The angels show up and say, get your tails on there to Bethlehem. Christ the Savior's born. You know, yeah. The, the whole thing is a Catholic slash Protestant lie celebrating Advent, and they celebrate it at the wrong time. We're to celebrate his death till he comes. What's wrong with doing that? You don't even do that at Easter, folks. 
You celebrate bunnies and rabbits and eggs and pastels and colors and going out to lunch with mommy afterwards. Good question, dude. This goes right through it. And the Lord smelled. We're talking about Christmas. It's a curse. It's a curse to him. It's cursing him. It's putting him to open embarrassment, open shame. Okay? I had a lady telling me they recognize that. That it's at the wrong time, Bondo? Um, listen to this. It says, And the Lord smelled the sweet savor, the savors of Christmas. And he cursed it. He curses the smells of Christmas, guys. They are a curse, not a blessing. You have embraced and allowed the warm and fuzzies of the wrong thing to take a hold of your cockles of your heart. Just in conversation today. Yeah. All right, buddy. And standing right next to Christmas is terror. God is going to remember this to the heights. We're giving you one more chance. To quit your Christmas, to burn your paraphernalia, to shut it down and not celebrate the devil and put Jesus Christ, Jehovah, to shame this year and to curse him. Well, what does the word curse mean? It makes him feel unwelcomed. Oh, Christ, the Savior. But Jesus doesn't feel welcome because he ain't that Savior you're talking about. You're talking about Barack Obama, the Antichrist. That's what that song is talking about. Yeah, Bono says, Jehovah, he wants to smell the sweet smell of praise. And when we pray, it's incense in his nostrils. Not when we celebrate the devil and spray some artificial air fresher. Psh, oh, don't that smell like Christmas? Psh, he curses it. Hey, sweetie, can you turn that off for me, please? Thank you. But he curses it. And standing right next to Christmas is terror. God's bringing the terror with it. And these idiots are teaching their children from youth pure wickedness. Are you one of those idiots? Have you been teaching your children to curse God? Have you been teaching your children to get the warm and fuzzies over that which God hates? And he's going to bring terror because of it to the whole world, the Christian world. Muslims don't celebrate Christmas. Now they do, but not for the most part. There's a atheist celebrate Christmas. Okay, everybody celebrates Christmas, but just for their own reasonings. And that's why a Christian shouldn't celebrate it. The Antichrist is being praised, guys, and the aroma stinks in heaven. It stinks where the truth is known. It stinks in your nostrils, doesn't it? All the stuff of Christmas, all the stuff of <laughs> Mithros and the North Pole and the J. Cain. Oh, my goodness. The word above it says, the lamb is in it. He will set a mark for Christmas. Check. You celebrated Christmas. Check. God marks that. And here's, check this out, this verse. And in the second month, the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dry. That was Noah, after he had been in that boat for a year. Remember? And this year, that's December 24th. The eighth month, the 20th day of the month, Cheshvan 20, December 24th, uh, 27th, I'm sorry, this the 27th day of the month. Cheshvan 27 is the 24th. And then it says, Yeshua and Mitchell. And Mitchell joins right next, joins to Christmas, right in that main verse. And it, this is another proof that the calendar that Sean has worked and reworked and been the watchmaker for is exactly accurate right now. Because of the judgments that God has pronounced, not just in this one, but a plethora of these Christmas codes 
God's bringing judgment and he's marked the day. God hates the smells. He hates the actions. He hates being cursed, left out. Oh, but we're including Jesus. Christ the Savior's born. Silent night, holy night. It's so unholy in heaven, guys. God hates it. Rex says, man, my family calls me the Grinch because I don't celebrate Christmas. That was the setup. It's the Grinch who steals Christmas. That's Jesus. Jesus is the Grinch. Jesus is the one coming to you in these Bible codes and the plain text telling you it's satanic. It's of the devil, man. And Christians still want to, don't tell me that. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear Jeremiah. That's Old Testament. Same God. It was God saying it. It was God saying it. God said, do not learn the way of the heathen. Don't go out in the woods, cut yourself down a tree, bring it into your house, set it up like a palm tree and decorate it with silver and gold. That was God saying that. He hates it. He deplores it. He detests it. My church does it. My preacher said it's fine. Your preacher is cursing God. That's what God just said here in this Bible code. It curses me. It puts Jehovah to shame, Christmas does. And the smell is disgusting in the, in the nostrils of God. The sweet smells, he turns to a curse. Oh, did y'all hear this, man? Jonathan Kahn, rabbi. Jonathan Kahn out of New Jersey. A uh, code searcher calls him Jeremiah. He, he's the prophet Jeremiah. Guys, the other night, while he was talking about Israel and their Messiah, at the 2418 mark, 24 minutes and 18 seconds, he says this. And he says it. I listened to it. Sean said, you got to hear this, dude. Quote, unquote, when they say Barack Obama, the whole world will be blessed. He says it really fast. Barack Obama. When they're seeing the Lord come, when they say, and they see Barack Obama come, they're going to say, oh, the whole world will be blessed. They're all around us, guys. They're all around us. Satan teachers. Tears. Oh, that's Jeremiah, says the devil. Guys, that's Hananiah. In the book of Jeremiah, Hananiah was the false prophet. Not Jeremiah. Hananiah. He opposed God. He brought a word that was different than the word of the Lord. He brought a word that was different than God's preacher was preaching. That's what he said the other night. Unreal. All right, here's another Christmas one. This is a Christmas Bible code Sean put together, but it's not published. The ELS is 357, which is Obama's number. Obama's number is 357. And it starts at the very character in the Bible, the 92,421 character. That's where the code starts. Okay, and those numbers are pretty tight. And it's all found in Exodus 9 and 10. Here's what it says next to Christmas. Okay, I want you to understand the heart of God in this and what he's going to do as a result of the Christian nation celebrating Christmas. And the hail smote throughout the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and broke every tree of the field. God's coming to kill those Christmas trees, man. Those groves. He's coming to destroy it. Christmas and the destruction of trees and vines. Next verse. And Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said unto him. You guys know that Moses, Sean, is going to go to Pharaoh and talk to him a little bit. Obama. He's the American Pharaoh and he's about to be the prince of the world. The man of sin, the son of perdition. And Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus says the Lord. Oh, they're coming with the real word of God, not Hananiah's version of it. Not Jonathan Kahn's version of it. Not Jonathan Matthew Wright's version of it. These guys are real prophets of God. Would you say that, that Moses and Aaron were true prophets of God? I would too. Bringing the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, how long, Pharaoh, will you refuse to humble yourself before me? We're asking you that, you Egyptian, 
in the Bible, e Egypt is a picture of sin. Egyptians are people of sin. And Christians are Egyptians. Americans? America is Egypt. We are Egypt. We are Sodom. We are Babylon. The whole world is. That's what God's called the entire world out of. But we're the big mouth. We're the, we got the big weapons. We got the big mouth. We force you, the big brother. We put our thumb on you and make you do things. So Moses and Pharaoh have come to, or Moses and uh, Aaron have come to Pharaoh with the word of the Lord saying, listen here, bro, how long are you going to refuse to humble yourself? And we're asking you that, stupid Christian. Anybody listening to me who claims to be a Christian, you're celebrating Christmas, how long are you going to refuse to humble yourself before Almighty God? You don't have much time. This is the last one. And we're encouraging you to step out in the strength of humility and say, no more in my house and take down your whole Christmas set before the Lord and say, this is for you, Lord God. And I'm no longer going to refuse to obey my God and to humble myself. I'm going to humble myself. I'm no longer going to be stubborn and proud. I hear you, Lord. I hear your truth in all of this. This is a Bible code that the word Christmas unlocks. How long are you going to refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. That's what God, God is telling the pastors. Will you let my people go? Will you get those Christmas trees off your stage? Will you get that six-pointed star flag off your stage? Will you get that American Babylon flag off your stage? Will you let my people go? Will you have them realize what sin is and what it's not? And you guys are filled with sin. You brought the abominations into your houses. You, you call your church the house of the Lord. And you brought all this stuff, these Christmas trees for this season, and those wreaths, and those menorahs, those nine-pronged menorahs for Hanukkah. You brought them in. You have refused to humble yourself before God. Because you like your warm and fuzzies, and you don't care what the God of heaven says. You've cursed God. You've not made him feel welcome at Christmas time in the city. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind, you know, the east coast. And he brought an east wind up on the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought in the locust. You got those to look forward to. Those locusts up from the bottomless pit. 250 million of them sting, 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 and people will wish to die and the power of death will be removed for five months. God's going to say, I'm not going to let anybody die for this next five month period. Uh, don't you just feel the Christmas cheer in all this from the Lord? He's just, oh, he's just so filled with Christmas cheer in all this. Bringing the curses, going to smash your trees, going to destroy you, going to destroy all you pastors who are acting like Pharaoh of Egypt. Because you've refused to humble yourself before him and you like it your way. And you got to have butts in the seat. And boy, they like it. I, they love that children's little program and the Christmas cantata. We're having a cantata. God hates it all. If Christmas cheer, oh, what a great day this is going to be. God's going to judge for all this. He has marked everybody who claims to be Christian who's celebrating Christmas. He has marked you. He's also marked those that haven't done it with a different color check mark, a different flavor of check mark, a check mark of blessing of those. And here's the third one. It's at a skip of 1152 negative. Uh, our neighbor tree burnt the house down last year. A lot of electrical on a tree and sooner or later there'll be a fire. They love money and shopping. Exactly. And what's happening guys is the Lord's letting them rack up their, credit cards and debt, debt, debt on stupid stuff. Man, the conversation inside my office is so disgusting. I got to leave. Cussing over the phone. I'm so blankety blank with so-and-so. She won't tell me what she wants. Well, I'm just going to blah, 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 blah. Get her gift card. Well, don't get her gift card. She said she don't want a gift card. That's just one conversation of billions. To the glory of God, Christ the Savior is born! Idiots.
How long will you refuse to humble yourself before Almighty God? How long will it be before you quit cursing him? Because he said you're cursing me. Oh, no, I'm not. You're cursing me. But my house smells great. Smells like an outhouse to me, says God. Guys, will you just go with God on this and do it his way? I know this ain't Burger King, and he's not Burger's king. He's the king of all kings. And why don't you do it his way instead? Okay? Will someone try to post a link where Jonathan Kahn said B.O. was... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll... Uh, it's just the Jonathan Kahn's latest sermon at that time frame. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, somebody find that. Okay, this third one is a skip of negative 1152. Here's what it says. This is the code. Click, 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 click. It shall be for me. Christmas is exalted. They say it's all for God. Oh, this is for God. This is for Jesus. We're going to exalt Christmas. And God has already told you it's a pagan satanic practice that he hates. It curses him and it nauseates him the smells that come from it. Oh, smell that pine tree. God says, I hate those groves. And you brought it into your house, that abomination. You brought every abomination. Again, look up Deuteronomy 7, 25 and 26. This is every one of you who have brought this stuff into your house. It's an abomination. And God hates it with a passion. Will you please believe him this time? Will you please believe him this year? It shall be for me. Christmas is exalted. They make it all for God and it has nothing to do with God. And Satan is laughing his tail off. Satan laughing spreads his wings. It starts in Deuteronomy eleven twenty nine, And it shall come to pass when the Lord my God shall bring you into the land, whether you go to possess it, that it shall, uh, that if thou shalt set the blessing upon Mount Gezerim and the curse upon Ebal, you have today the opportunity to stand on one of those mountains. Gerizim or Ebal? Ebal is the mount of the curse. Gerizim is the mount of the blessing. You'll be blessed if you do this. Jeremiah, or uh, Deuteronomy 27, 28, 29. You'll be blessed if you do this, 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 this. You'll be cursed if you do this. And the list is much longer in the cursing. Why don't you familiarize yourself with what God is blessed by and what he's cursed by and stay away from all the stuff that curses him. Yeah, but it's a warm and fuzzy to me. This ain't about you, dude. That was back when you were a Satanist. Satanism is all about me, 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 me. Do as thou wilt. To thine own self be true. That shall be the whole of the law. Do, please yourself. But we're here to please God. And so we read that list and we say, you know what? Garrison for me, dude. You can have e-ball. You can have the curses. I'm taking Garrison. Deuteronomy 12.31 Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods, for even their sons and their daughters do they burn in the fire to their gods. They're teaching them all wickedness. They're teaching them to rebel. They're teaching them to be a cursing. They're teaching them to stink in the nostrils of God as they become of age. Talk about fire from God. This would kill people if God were acting exactly according as he did to the Israelites. You and I are not the Israelites. We're the bride of Christ. I'm supposing you're a true believer in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You're saved. I'm just supposing that. Now, why don't you act like that? Why don't you be a good bride, not a whore, not a slut? Everybody who celebrates Halloween, Easter, Christmas, you are whores. And you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a whore against God. I, ho I whore around on him because it feels good. I love to spread my legs. This is the book of Ezekiel says this. Ahola and Aholaba, the wives of God, they spread their legs to everything that walks past. And God says, I watch it and I see it and it breaks my heart. And his next step after a heartbroken and warning of love, please come back, please come back to me, please come back, please repent, please turn to me. Please quit serving these other gods. Please quit serving the devil. Please quit serving yourself, serving the devil. Please. And then when he's had enough, when he's taken it to the line, and has crossed his line of lines, he judges. And that's what's a-coming. Kayla says, amen. This world is so self-pleasing, 
and people pleasing, it's not worth it. You either with God or you with the world. They didn't even know why they put these trees up and do it because the world does. They can't even think for themselves. The TV thinks for them. Great point. Great point. The TV, the music, everything thinks for them. And that thing they got up in their veins that has shut down their brains, their thinking systems. And they just go with the flow along with fluoride, whatever. Yeah, you just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And yeah, we got to do it this way. Because I'm the only Christian in my family and all my family's heathen, so I got to go please the heathens. What? Rethink your sitch. This would kill people today. And right here in this same one, York is reversed at the start. Like New York, it's reversed. Deuteronomy 22, 24. Then you shall bring them both out unto the gate. Who? The people that have committed whoredoms against God. Both the male and the female. Listen to this verse. Then ye shall bring them both out to the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones, kill them till they die. The damsel, the female, because she didn't cry, because she kind of liked what was happening, she enjoyed the warm and fuzzies of that God. Being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away the evil from the midst of thee, and kill them all. That's God's heart. That is still his heart. But there's no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, a lot of people think it's real gone crazy, and I'm one. Sin paints an uglier picture. Yeah. Amen. Demon GPT. Okay. Here we go, man. It's all that. It's Tesla tech. It's frequency. It's all that. Demon technology, man. Televisions do it. The television, guys, the design in the television is to brainwash you. The, the electromagnet field, uh, the electromagnetic field coming off of that is to brainwash you and it's working. To change your brain. Yeah, talking to Siri and Google, right on. Everybody's talking to the devil, ain't nobody talking to Jesus. Everybody's pleasing themselves and his heart is breaking over there, saying, will you please quit spreading your legs at every holiday that comes along? That's what he says. Deuteronomy 17.9. Ooh, 17.9, like, yeah. All right. And thou shalt come unto the priests and the Levites and unto the judge that shall be in those days. And thou shalt inquire and they shall declare unto you the sentence of judgment. It's coming. It's right here. It's right here. It's a tricky situation when one spouse wants to do the holidays and the other doesn't. Especially if you want a strong marriage ready for the holidays to be over. Mm -hmm. No kidding. No kidding. And our marriage is to the Lord Jesus. Our strong marriage is to him. Amen. Good point. Very good point. And then right here, the, the Christmas code ends in Deuteronomy 8, 5. And thou shalt consider in your heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God will chasten you. There is going to be some kind of chastisement that takes place. Not condemnation, but chastisement. For everybody who willfully went against God and spread their legs at every other God that come along. Every other fad, every other thing, every other sensational idea, warm and fuzzies. And don't even read your Bible and have no heart to say, when you wake up in the morning, Lord, 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 all I want, Jesus, all I want is to be right with you. I don't want to oppose you. I don't want to hurt your heart. If there's any way in me that's wrong, go, oh, man, straighten that out. Please, God, please, God. That's you, right? Every day, every minute of every day, that's you. That should be a, ch a chastised, you know, a woman of chastity, a bride who's clean and pure and wants to please her husband. Right? Yeah, TV patents show the technology. You can, you can go and look at television patents in the latest and these flat screen, plasma screens, all that jazz are poisoning your mind, man. Amen? 
And so Christmas ends right here about God is going to chastise those who celebrate Christmas. He's going to chastise you, man. Oh, that preacher, he just preaches hard. I'm warning you about the one who's coming harder than me. God himself. But they refuse to listen to God. Okay, and then here we go, Christmas again. The next ELS is 1207. Hmm. 1207. It says this, fire for Christmas. Fire for Christmas. Exodus 20, 24. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereupon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thy oxen, in every place where I cause my name to be mentioned, I will come unto thee and bless thee. You notice that fire for Christmas, and this verse is Exodus twenty twenty four. Christmas ends in 2024. Now that's 2023 to you and me. Amen. Why did Obama say the war on Christmas several years ago? What was that about? In my first term, we won the war in Iraq. In my next term, we'll win the war on Christmas. I think something bad's going to happen this Christmas to America. I think it may start with our monies and then slowly graduate from there because God wants to snatch people's gods from them so they'll turn to him. And money's the biggest god in America. And so, I, it, it, this is plausible. I don't have a Bible code for this, okay? But something's going to happen at Christmas because Obama hates the people of Christmas who's, you know, supposed to be the Christians. God says, they do, they do this for me and they're not doing it for me. They're not doing this for me, man. They're doing this in opposition to me. But everybody thinks they're doing it for God. And so that's when Obama comes in and has his war on Christmas. Now, that war is also the Palestinians and Israel. It's happening at Christmas, right? That one Russia, Ukraine, that's happening at Christmas, right? All these other battle lines are heating up. The French are so mad at the United States right now. And they said, we're going to defend ourselves. You guys are dragging your feet. You're being all stupid. Because you guys did hear that Iran released 33,000 war boats into the water. Now, many of them are drones. And those drones are worse than a boat because you can't see them coming. And they have just as much firepower. 33,000. You don't think that's a Freemason number or nothing? And the French are livid at us. So there's another war line among our friends. Cyber attack? Yeah, Rex. Uh, guys, I forgot my phone today. It, it was a thing of God. But it was also a reminder how terrible it's going to be when everybody's without their phone. Today was the day my dad died, and I needed to be communicating with folks. And I had no communication whatsoever with anybody. Not even my wife here, six miles away. It's going to be bad when the phones go down. It's going to be bad when the internet goes down. So we're looking at those things, guys. We're looking from the 24th to the 31st, maybe some event happening here in the USA. We'll see. Are the codes certain American tsunami destruction doesn't precede the rapture? It's at the same time because God's not going to kill any of his people with this tsunami. God is not going to allow any. We are the restraints. We are holding this off. Now, the devil wants to kill them all, but God's not going to allow it to happen. We are the handcuffs. We restrain the devil. And so he can't do it. It's going to be simultaneous, but we will have been raptured. The man-child. Satan wants to kill the man-child. Now, that is Sean. Sean is the very child. He's our representative. We're all the body of Christ. But Satan wants him dead. Our ambassador, our apostle, our Bible writer. Okay? Satan wants him dead before the rapture. And God's not going to let it happen. We're going to be right there with him. The days after the rapture, there will be poisoned water. Yep, yep. And then more poisoned water coming in from Wormwood. And then more poisoned water. Yeah. They're already poisoned our waters with chemtrails. Your waters are filled with strontium, barium, aluminum, and lithium, and whatever else they throw in there. Human pathogens. 
that's tainted blood, folks. Oh, I got, I don't know how I got COVID. You walk outside and breathe the air, dude. That's how you got it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's praise the Lord and quit celebrating Christmas, but they always include Jesus and all that. No, this is for the Lord. Social media addiction is real. When the internet and the communications go. These people will lose their minds. They're going to lose it mentally. They sure will. They sure will, because they're tied to these things. You and I have the Bible. I have the Holy Spirit in me. I don't need these things. We like these things. They help right now. I love what we're doing right now. I went to the city zoo today, and the kids tried drinking out of the water fountain, and it tasted so terrible they couldn't do it. Tasted like dirt. Yep. Lots of food recalls right now. Chicken, spinach, oatmeal, pizza, and soft drinks. Yep, they're all tainted and poisoned. So I hope something terrible happens because he still wants to wake some people up. Yeah, yeah, that, that's God's M.O., God's emo. He'll take away, take away, take away, take away. And some people are so stubborn, they don't care. And some people will humble themselves and care. Maybe they'll come across here. They'll be start to pray. Lord, can you direct me to truth? Or whatever's truth. And he'll direct them here. Bible codes. He'll direct them to the Bible codes. And that Robert Breaker was introduced to the Bible code and said, oh, cool. And went on with his other stuff. All right. Fire for Christmas. That was that one. Ends in 2024. Exodus 2024. 20, now we have another one. Christmas tree. Okay. Are, are y'all getting any kind of a pattern here that God hates Christmas trees? He hates these idols. He hates these whoremongering people of his who just, oh, wrap their legs right around these Christmas trees. It makes them all warm and fuzzy. Christmas tree. Psalm 105, 33. He smoked their vines also and their fig trees and break the trees of their coasts. That's a tsunami on the East Coast, folks. Christmas tree. Star of David. American flag. Nine-pronged menorahs. God's coming after all your idols, folks. Same with Pharaoh. God took and took until it truly affected him. Still, his heart was hardened. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh hardened his heart. Pharaoh hardened his heart. And God finally hardened his heart. And that's what's going to happen. It's the same play out, guys, every time. Our God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants people saved. The title of this code is Christmas tree. Christmas tree. And he break, and the, the verse is Psalm 105.33. And then Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will tell thee great things and hidden which thou knowest not. Amen. And God goes right through Moses. And it starts at number 915. This is the character in, in that one sentence all the way through. The, the character number 915,029. That's where this starts. Those numbers are pretty Cool. If you'll look at those numbers, 9 plus 1 is 10, 15, 16, 17, and 9 is 26. yod heh vav -he. God is 26. Amen. The good news, 26. And it says, this is the only Hebrew code with Christmas tree in one row. Boom, Christmas tree. This is it. And then the, the word trees appear in the text along the, with the table, okay? And then, guys, this is a new thing. Then he went and took Jeremiah 1 because of Jeremiah 10. Do not learn the way of the heathen. He took verse 1 and the last verse of Jeremiah and looped them. Boom. And now he's looking for codes in Jeremiah. And he gave us a little taste of one of them. The first code is Christmas tree. He just wrote me the note. That said, the only time Christmas tree appears in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, was the last one we looked at. And then when he wrapped Jeremiah, there it is, Christmas tree. And he laughed and laughed about that, and so did I. Because it's going to be in here a bunch of times, guys. 
He said, I am in shock about that. Because he had just looked all over for Christmas tree and found it one time in a row. And now here it is when he wrapped Jeremiah. Here it's uh, right under it in Jeremiah 719. Remember 719? Remember 79? Remember the 50-day count? Ended on July 9th, 79? And then that 10 days later? All that good stuff? Here it is again. God's pointing it out. Something is up with that number. Do they provoke me, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? They're hurting themselves. That's what God says. They're hurting me, yeah, but they're really hurting themselves. Because God has the last word. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. I'm coming to smash your branches. Your coastal, east coastal branches. He's going to continue killing until they're all dead. Jeremiah 619, hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not attended unto my words. They don't read my Bible. They hate Jeremiah 10. The, oh, that pastor's preaching about that. Shut him off. Shut him off. Mm. And as for my teaching, they have rejected it, God says. If you reject my message tonight, you're rejecting God. Because God sent me on a mission to preach these Bible codes, God's word in his dialect, his fire, his thunder. And you are rejecting him if you hate my message tonight. And you better know it. And you better learn to repent and say, okay, okay, I got to change this. I'm tired of refusing God. I don't want the repercussions that's coming with that. Because there's a judgment seat of Christ for some kind of reason for saints. And there's great reward in those who diligently seek God, not those who diligently refuse him and reject him. Something else going on there. Job, the last Jehovah, has the last word. Job, the, la the last Jehovah has the last word. He does. I mean, yeah. Jehovah's word. He has last say. You can say all you want, think everything you think, but he's a coming. His word is final. That's a good point, bro. Jeremiah 5, 19. And it shall come to pass when ye shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord our God done all these terrible things to us? Then shalt thou say unto them, Jeremiah, Like as you have forsaken me and served strange gods, your Christmas tree, your wreath, the list that you brought into your house, all those ancient albums that go back and forth. You guys know you're listening to the dead on a lot of those. Those are recordings, right? Then shalt thou say unto them, Like as you have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Hey guys, you Americans, you unsaved Americans who were not killed during the tsunami are going to be placed on boats and shipped to North Korea China, Iran, Russia, to be their slaves. Bon voyage. And then that code ends here. What code? Christmas tree in Jeremiah looped, wrapped. And it ends here at Jeremiah 51. What, Babylon? 50 and 51 is about the destruction of the USA. And here's where this Christmas tree ends. And Jeremiah wrote in one book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written concerning Babylon. Temple, the word temple is standing right next to it. And it stands in this passage. Destruction followeth upon destruction, for the whole land is spoiled. Suddenly are my tents spoiled, my curtains in a moment. Uh... Are those preachers that preach against Christmas just crazy or they preach in the heart of God? The word of the Lord, his fire and his dialect, his thunders, his bread, his manna. What, which is it? Are we crazy or are you rebellious? Are we standing here on the behalf of God being his voice? Because we get that privilege, guys. All of us Christians get the privilege to be his voice, his hands, his mouth, his heart, his feet. His body. We're the body of Christ.
and we get that privilege. Now, either I'm being the voice of God or I'm not. And you better come to the conclusion because we're going through Bible codes here. Not just any Bible code, Sean Mitchell's Bible codes, the true thunders, the real codes, God calls them. Now, are you going to make the right decision? You only have days to get that out of your house before Satan's birthday, before Barack Obama's spiritual birthday. You guys know how we have a spiritual birthday the day we were saved. Mine was October 27th, 1985. Spiritual birthday. Physical birthday, February 17th. Obama's spiritual birthday is Christmas Day. The Antichrist. Tammuz. Horus. Everybody is celebrating the spiritual birthday of the Antichrist. And you better come to believe this with all your heart in repentance and tear your stuff apart, rip it out, burn it up. Don't give it to somebody. Don't you give your heathenism to somebody else. Don't you give your wickedness. Don't you give that which God is going to judge someone for to somebody else. As soon as you cut a Christmas tree down, it's slowly dying. They cut the life away from the tree. Yep. Praise God, guys. We're begging you. We are telling you in fire, God's gunning for you, and he's gunning for you. He said so. He hates your smells. Ooh, that smell. Your Christmas smells are the smell of death to God, the smell of an outhouse. He hates it. He hates you wrapping your legs around every Christmas tree, around the wreaths, around the presents, around all the warm smells and the old nostalgia albums and songs. He hates you lip-locking with those devils. Because you're supposed to be his bride, right? And you're whoring around on him. Every chance you get. The next, you know, we were talking about football, B-A-A-L, Baal, Baal, football, baseball, basketball, soccer, ball. The next ball after Christmas is the big ball dropping in New York. New Year's Eve, which ain't New Year's Eve to God. Because it's off his calendar. His New Year's Eve is May 22nd, 2024. Any other New Year's Eve celebrated in that ball dropping in New York? Baal, guys, it's Baal. Baal! God's enemy. Get yourself out of Babylon. Get yourself to Calvary and you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. Humble yourself. Don't be proud. Don't resist him anymore. Don't reject him anymore. When you reject his preachers, Jeremiah and such, you're rejecting him. Samuel, God says, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Grant them their wish. You go ahead and give them their King Saul. And the curse came upon the people for wanting that. And the curse is coming up on these people who want their Christmas and their Easter and their Valentines and their ball dropping and their... Please step out of Babylon. We have begged you and begged you for years. And we've run out of years. We've run out of a year. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Please, God, when that happens, be pleasing him. Please him. Please him now. Please him at this moment. Uh, Vondo has put up the Balaam sermon. Ball. Amen. And that link right there, that's, that's the other night we preached the ball sermon. Serving, serving other balls as opposed to serving Jesus. The word ball means Lord. Who's your Lord? What do you get jacked up over? Remember, when Jesus comes down from heaven... He's going to be shouting. He's going to find a bunch of people shouting for sports and shouting for entertainment and shouting for everything else but him. But there's a few. There's a few, like you, who are going to be so excited to see him, and you're going to shout too. You're shouting now the praises of the living God. And we'll keep on shouting when we see him. And our shouts will be in harmony, his and ours. The voice of God and the voice of his people. Amen. Let that be true right now. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for loving us. Papa, you're the best God ever, the best Papa ever. Oh, just the best everything. And help us to please you. We have a desire to please you. I pray that you'll convict hearts who've heard this message and will hear it, who will come to understand your 
righteous indignation, your anger, your wrath against these things, and the trouble that's coming afterwards. Please awaken these folks. Open their eyes. I thank you for Vondo and his ministry here. Thank you for Sean. Bless him. Keep showing him things, Lord, till you come. We're so excited for all of it. We love your word. We love you. And I pray you'll bless us tonight. Uh, bless me in the days ahead. We get ready to preach dad's funeral. That you'll be glorified. People will be saved. The righteous will be encouraged and even challenged and convicted. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. And I mean every word of that. Peace.